Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. He is Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on Lord, earth peace, peace good will towards, towards men. men. We, we praise thee, thee we bless thee, thee, we worship thee, thee we glorify thee. thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Strengthen, O Lord, we beseech thee, the bishops of thy church, in their special calling to be teachers and ministers of the sacraments, that they, like thy servant Cyril of Jerusalem, may effectively instruct thy people in Christian faith and practice, and that we, taught by them, may enter more fully into the celebration of the Paschal Mystery, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. In all that he did, he gave thanks to the Holy One, the Most High, proclaiming his glory. He sang praise with all his heart, and he loved his maker. He placed singers before the altar to make sweet melody with their voices. He gave beauty to the festivals and arranged their times throughout the year while they praised God's holy name and the sanctuary resounded from early morning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34, beginning on page 627 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord, and he entered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and save me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Lord be with you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of Cyril, Bishop of Jerusalem. Um, he's the one who, I'll, I'll read you a bit about him first and then we'll talk. Um, he's the one that we have the most to thank for the development of catechetical instruction and liturgical observances during Lent and Holy Week. He was born in Jerusalem around the year 315. He became Bishop of Jerusalem probably in 349. And, uh, he was banished and restored to um, that state several times in the course of political and ecclesiastical disputes. His catechetical lectures on the Christian faith given before Easter to candidates for baptism were probably written by him sometime between 348 and 350. And that work um, was probably used many times over by Cyril to instruct newcomers in the faith at this time of year, a, a subject near and dear to my heart because that's what I do here. Um, these lectures uh, were probably revised over the years. They were probably part of the pre-baptismal instruction that Egeria, a, a name that might be familiar to you, um, who was a pilgrim nun from Western Europe, witnessed at Jerusalem in the fourth century and described with great enthusiasm in the account of her pilgrimage. Um, anyone who's teaching about Holy Week might begin, well, with the Gospels and then talk about Egeria, who was this pilgrim nun in the fourth century who went to Jerusalem and saw that they were um, worshiping in Holy Week and what we call Holy Week in a way that is um, that was new to her and um, powerfully compelling. And those liturgies ultimately filtered down to what we have now in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer as the liturgies of Holy Week, um, an observance that was restored to the Episcopal Church in its fullness in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. Um, it's likely that he instituted the observances of Palm Sunday and Holy Week during the latter years of his episcopate and that he took practical steps to organize devotions for countless pilgrims and local inhabitants around the sacred sites in Jerusalem. So um, he died in 381, I'm sorry, 386. Um, we hear several kinds of concerns coalescing around the name Cyril of Jerusalem here. Um, the one is for education in the faith for this great process of uh, watching people in history, in, the, in this historical moment or in that historical moment with our everyday lives and our everyday preoccupations with the formation that the world has given us of one kind or another, um, coming into contact with the spiritual and mental and theological formation that Jesus has given us in the church and that the church has cherished and developed. And it is, um, that is a thing of great beauty. Right? Uh, we may have participated in that as students. I recognize some of you out there. Um, you may recognize that as a teacher or it may simply be part of your experience in general that when, the, um, when this moment meets Jesus right, and uh, ignites not only love, but also intellectual love and um, ideas and new ways of seeing and new possibilities, when old obstacles start to fall away or when someone can put into words 
that thing that has been nagging at us, that has drawn us to Jerusalem for, um, for formation and, and to participate. When, when we have words for that, we are a very privileged community. So this period of preparing people to be confirmed and received into the church and baptized and to renew their baptismal vows, what's going on right now with what we call confirmation class every Sunday, um, that is a thing of great beauty and it's an opportunity to see the Holy Spirit at work and to know that the Holy Spirit wants not just what's in the books, you know, but what's in our lives to be filled with the presence of God and to be a warm, rich, compelling, capacious, joyful place of shelter, really. One, uh, one writer that I like and his name I have forgotten describes the catechumenate, this process of education, as rehab for people who are addicted to the world. And I've always liked that a lot because it gets down into uh, the way that Jesus in the church reshapes us and reforms us. And that is closely akin to the experience of worship. It's no accident that Cyril would be known both for worship and for education and formation. Worship is also a form of education. It can't be limited to that, but every time we come here to worship, you know, every time we come to Mass, we're taught to sit near one another, sort of, in the pews, even during a time of pandemic. Um, we are taught to be quiet sometimes and to speak up at other times and to rise to our feet uh, when the moment calls for it and to kneel as we're able when reverence asks us to pour out our souls in prayer. We're taught to um, move forward and stretch out our hands to receive the bread of life. We are taught to give thanks. We are taught to repent for our sins. We're taught to hear the word of God. We're taught that we belong together. We're taught that we're a community. So little else in the world teaches us that we belong together, that we can move in harmony with one another, that we can come here exactly as we are and be part of something great that praises God and furthers the work of God's kingdom. That's probably enough. <laughs> That's probably enough. Um, all the work that we do in the church, the work of a bishop certainly, um, all the work that the church does to foster our lives of faith, every, every little shelter, however permanent or temporary, the church builds around us as we are moving and growing and taking our refuge and um, resting and learning and striving and practicing. Every little structure the church builds around us is a sacred structure. So whether it's today's worship or a lifetime's worship or today's learning or a lifetime's learning or the social um, uh, opportunity that has been given to us over coffee and donuts or whatever it might be, every little structure the church is moved to build by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of God, by the compelling love of Jesus. Every one of those things is blessed. Um, and so blessed are we who are part of the church. Blessed are we who keep the stones in place and the floors clean and the uh, collection basket uh, topped off. And uh, blessed are we in everything that we do to create that great shelter for all humankind that is the life of the church. Even to give one of the little ones a cup of water in the name of Jesus is to earn the reward. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. 
and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Sean, Britt, Nicholas, Stephen, and Gordon, my brother and sister priests who worship and work in this place, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, the members of Congress and the courts, Tom, our governor, and Jim, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Chris, Sue, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Kathleen, Mark, Ira, Judith, Nick, Russell, Wes, John, Joan, Marilyn, Lorraine, Teresa, Will, Bryce, Audrey, Lucas, Valerie, Joanne, Alex, and Nolan, and all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, remembering especially those who have died of COVID-19 in the past day, and remembering all those who have died violent deaths, praying especially for an end to military conflict in Ukraine and throughout the world where trouble reigns. We beseech thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, blessed Cyril, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by God, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me.
Blessed art thou, O Lord God of all creation. Through thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth hath given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through thy goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, blessed be God forever. Come, almighty and eternal God, we sanctify thee, and bless this sacrifice prepared for thy holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through the great shepherd of thy flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even unto the end of the ages. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 